started Ashbury in uh, June 07, and it was something we always talked about. We'd been talking about starting a company, like us three, for probably who knows how long. And then Nima hurt his knee while filming for Weird People 2, and when he hurt his knee, I think he said free time, and finally we pulled the trigger on, on starting Ashbury. So I'm having a really hard time at like not looking over <laughs> the Like I feel like if you were just even a little bit more to the left, I'd be able to focus. He's just like... We already had like a good connection with the snowboarders that we wanted to see. And it just so happened that like most of these snowboarders didn't have a goggle sponsor or an eyewear sponsor. So it was pretty easy to, to bring them all together and most of them were just down just because we were their homies and they were just down to do it just to support. Our brand. Um, a lot of our perception on any brand and what we buy was based on like who we liked, not what we liked, you know? Once you like certain guys, you buy their brands based on that line and what you like. And we were working in the industry, Nemo's Pro Snowboarder, so the guys that are most accessible to us were also the guys that we were like really psyched on and just made it super easy. Not having a lot of money as well, it makes things harder for you, like marketing. So we wanted to create a culture uh, around Ashbury and that's why we had the blog spot and people would treat the blog spot as like media site. And so when we have like all these snowboarders that were homies or maybe respected each other from afar and we kind of brought them all together, we were able to make a big splash without a lot of money because all the kids were like seeking out these dudes. And we, we, we didn't have a we didn't have a product and we had like a website, but we had little press releases like introducing Jordan Mendenhall. And you know, we're we're putting out this stuff to the site, to the websites, and we didn't even know who or where we we're gonna make our goggles with. We were already generating like, oh my god, Ashbury, Ashbury, and people would hit us up like Nick Dirk hit me up to get on the team and he was someone I already wanted, but I'm not like quick to approach people. So once we kind of got everyone interested, it made what we wanted the easiest possible scenario. If you take away each dude that we started, and still now, you take away their snowboarding, they'd still be something that someone you'd be interested in. And it happens that happened that like none of them had eyewear sponsors, so we were able to like pick and choose our dream riders. But most eyewear brands didn't want those guys because they don't wear goggles. I talked to Sexton after, because he had talked to Sexton, but I had a good relationship with him through trying to get him on K2, and I was at the grocery store and I called him. I was like, Nima, should I call him? Okay, I'm gonna call him. He was like, oh yeah, you guys are start a, a boot company, right? I'm like, no, I wear And he didn't, you know, he didn't have anything going on, so he came on, and then with Laurent, none of us knew Laurent, but he was just like, kind of, to us, other than, you know, the few beauty parts he had in kind of underground videos, he was this obscure French-Canadian dude. I think just with that and the Viagras and the demo and everything, we created a culture that was super inclusive. Like it was our riders and us and anyone else that like our riders are homie with or we thought were sick and it just became like one big crew. So anyone that came on after that, it was so natural and everyone, no one was ever opposed to anyone getting on the team because everyone already treated them like they're on the team other than us sending them product. Like snowboarding was going so like crazy olive prints and all these crazy colors and stuff like that that we won't even wear like we would never wear that stuff so we wanted to come with goggles that were like simple looking black white brown tortoise stuff that we would wear and our friends would wear because no one else was doing that and by going simple we were doing something different yeah no one even made brown tortoise shell goggles which to us was odd because every company always black brown tortoise shell. And the fact that no goggle company made brown tortoise shell goggles, it's obviously it's gonna look good. all their aesthetics were the same. Yeah. It was like all the same brands with different logos on them. All the other eyewear brands were making big bubble goggles with like fucking rainbows all over them, and like tie-dye, like everything. <laughs> I just feel like we came out with stuff that was maybe more wearable for our type of snowboarder. 
and that kind of worked in our favor. Everybody was wearing Oakley, Electric, Spy, Smith. You know, not that there's anything wrong with those brands, but it's like all of a sudden, like you know, something new and you know, something uh, something new to choose from, I guess, like something new to wear. So we kind of maybe had that working in our favor a little bit. Yeah. And really, I mean, we take our quality really seriously. We're not shoving it down people's throats. And the Zeiss lens is something that we don't have to shove down people's throats. You see Zeiss and you know, okay, like, okay, they, they're not just some kids who like snowboarding and skateboarding. It's like real deal. We're gonna add our fourth goggle frame. Uh, that's in the works right now. We're always releasing new sunglass frames. So we have two new ones coming out for the summer, some more signature edition sunglasses. Um, we're expanding our apparel line. And in general, we like what we're doing and we can to do it, maybe like bigger scale and uh, keep working on quality. And we want to put out, pump out more video stuff. I have, I have a camera and I'm trying to get there and do, just create more like original content. But we like what we're doing, we're gonna kinda keep doing that.